Uh, Father, Heavenly Father, we come before you to just herald your, your word to, to grow in you, uh, to grow in your word, to grow in relation with you through your word, uh, only through Jesus Christ and by your Holy Spirit. This is by your grace, Lord, and we, we pray for your grace here this morning. Amen. Uh, so, I'm up here again. I always do the caveat that this is 9.30. I'm not going to give you a sermon uh, in the classical sense of a sermon. And so everybody should have an outline, a very simple outline, uh, in their bulletins this morning, uh, which is titled, Resources to Help You Grow Bible Studies. So you might have thought, like, Stephen, you did uh, Bible verses, Bible topics, or Bible scripture sheets, uh, foundational articles, uh, and a foundational book list. Why are we going back in time to Bible studies? Part of the reason is because uh, that's just how I did it. Uh, the other thing is, which we'll get into, is um, to kind of bridge the subject now is that when we read the Bible, we're not just reading the Bible. There's no such thing as anyone who just reads the Bible in some neutral sense. You're bringing some preconceived ideas and notions into it as you study Scripture. And so every church does Bible studies. If they, if they don't, then there's a problem, right? If they're not studying the Scriptures. Um, but the reason I'm circling back to Bible studies or, or coming to Bible studies we have now is because as we're looking at resources that will help everybody grow, um, the Bible studies that we have here will make a little bit more sense, or at least the ones I've got listed, will make a little bit more sense if you've read the foundational articles and read the books uh, uh, to kind of get the paradigms and way of thinking to be a little bit more biblical. So uh, one of my goals today is we're going to, if you were to have a checklist, we're going to check this one off. And this is the major goal of this morning, is to give you this piece of paper so that you have it. So if you have it, it's done, it's complete. You got 45 minutes to drink coffee until the 10.30 starts. Uh, because if you see uh, three quarters of the way down where it actually says Bible studies, there are some of our most used Bible studies. Um, these are just some of the ones we use the most that we are, are foundational to who we are, to helping people grow. And we'll get into those uh, in a more practical sense as we go through this. But our theme verse we've been using is Colossians 1, 28 and 29. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. So our goal here, our goal here this morning, uh, part of this is a little sliver, our goal as a church is to present everybody mature in Christ. Everybody is an equal uh, maturity opportunity uh, to, to be able to mature, right? Paul doesn't say that, well, there's some that just aren't going to mature and we'll just kind of put them over here and kind of babysit them for a little bit and hopefully they'll come and they'll attend and they'll listen and they'll tithe, but... We don't really have any expectation that they'll mature and become useful, uh, but we're sure glad to have them. No, Paul just says everyone can be mature. His goal was everybody in every church he planted. Uh, the end goal was maturity. And so we've been looking at how we do that through knowledge and through study. And um, what we're looking at is, uh, like when we asked the question on, I think it was when I was doing the foundational book list, on, we have books on the gospel. And so we all know Romans 1.16 to some degree. And it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to save uh, all who believe, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. Well, uh, if you're a Christian and you say, I believe the gospel, well, tell me what the gospel is. <laughs> Sit down, talk to me, explain it to me. Because if you can think in your head that I know what the gospel is, but you can't explain it through your words, then you just don't know it that deeply, right? It's not as of a mature thought, uh, and you haven't actually worked through it maybe as much as you thought you have. 
And so, it, but it's not just knowledge. We're not Gnostics, right? We're, don't, we're not just saying the more you study, the more you learn, the, the better Christian you are. We're not saying you can study your way to perform better to Christ. But God has worked it in such a way, being the source of all wisdom and knowledge, is that we do grow in him through knowledge, right? We grow in according, and we're held, held accountable and according to our faith, right? Faith in what? Well, well, we have a knowledge of things. We have a knowledge of Christ. We have a knowledge of atonement. We have a knowledge of sin. And we're uh, held accountable according to our faith. And our faith is directly according to how much knowledge we have. And so uh, one of the reasons why we take this so seriously, uh, if you look at your next verse, Colossians 2, 8, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. Um, and so uh, I'm going to read the one thing, the one note I prepared uh, that isn't on your outline. It's from a, so I was reading a famous pastor uh, who's, who's in the news uh, lately, at least in my circle of news. And so he quote, this is a quote from him um, as to why they're going back and they're putting out so many things, so many publications, so many articles, so many videos, so many books. Uh, they've got a press company. And so he, he says, this is because so many things have completely unraveled over the last few generations. And so many of these disasters were made possible through ill-advised compromise by the evangelicals, that it is necessary to go back over everything we need to revisit everything and make sure that we're holding fast to the faith once delivered to the saints. This is something that the church is summoned to do. We must do it or we perish. Uh, so that was a, a modern pastor who was talking about the, the, the reason to revisit everything and restudy everything, much of the same goal that we have. And so Paul puts it in Colossians is, be careful that no one's taking you by by human cunning, empty deceit, uh, and, and philosophies. And Paul's talking to a church, right? He's not saying uh, out here in secular humanism world or in the pagan world uh, to these people. He's talking about the church. There were heresies that were arising in the church that were going to slowly creep in and lead people away. And that's a pattern of the world and a scheme of the devil that you can bank on that is going to happen. So if you're not continually revisiting and re-examining and trying to rediscover uh, uh, biblical truths and grow in that area, then you are going to be eventually captured through deceit or some empty philosophy or, or human cunning that takes you away from Christ. That's just the way God designed the world, that we either pursue him or we fall away. There's no neutrality. There's no stagnant. There's no, well, I'm just going to sit here for a minute and stay warm, and then we'll get up and go. Uh, it's either progressing forward or you're progressing backwards. And so I would see it in our modern era, if you're wondering why so many things, especially in the West, are falling apart, uh, it's because of the church. The church's lack of influence, and you see the church declining um, and being more held captive by the world. And so, uh, so every church does Bible studies, right? That's a real question. <laughs> it should, right? These are, this is a question and answer format. Uh, so I've been to several churches. I've been uh, involved in several churches over the years. And in, in my kind of experience, I think it holds true uh, to the greater uh, evangelical culture is you can go into a church and get tons and tons of Bible study, right? You come, in, come into this church and get tons of Bible studies. That doesn't necessarily help you. And I don't necessarily see every church, every person growing in Christ. Right? Does that, does that make sense? Uh, and here's what I've seen. Um, and you guys can kind of weigh this and see if this is your experience. And so let's say you're a... Uh, woman. That's about 50% of the world, right? I got half of your attention. Uh, <laughs> maybe a little over half today uh, here. Um, 
And you go into the church, and they're doing Bible studies on what it means to be a biblical woman. And they talk all about biblical womanhood, and, and this is what it means. And this is what the Bible says you should do to be a, a good woman. Um, and you can have pre preconceived ideas in your head of whatever you think I'm talking about. Uh, I'm not going to mention any topics there. But, and so that might not necessarily help you because it's not leading you close, closer to Christ. Right? You can talk all about biblical womanhood or biblical manhood or what faith is and not ever talk about Christ and not ever lead someone closer to Christ. Right? This might like shock some of you, but uh, if they're talking about biblical womanhood and it never talks about the fem feminine submissiveness of Christ, then they're not leading you closer to Christ. It's generally going to lead you closer to a tradition or a works-based salvation, right? Uh, so without any more on that topic, um, but did you guys see how that works? You can go and you can study the Bible and you can do all these things and it doesn't necessarily help you grow uh, if it's not done in a biblical way, if it's not leading you closer to Christ, right? That's when people get captivated by philosophies, what Paul calls empty deceit and human tradition, Right, or the elemental spirits, or the ideas of the world. Right. Um, uh, many times, I heard a uh, just in the circle of kind of pastors I follow, I just saw a comment from another pastor that I that I really like. I said that someone should do a book on just the church growth through movement and how that just decimated uh, the Western church and how that was just the worst thing possible for the church. Uh, because the church growth movement and you see like those hip pastors who are like cool, right? And they're captivating and they're charismatic. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't think that's me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but that's kind of like a, a worldly spirit of like, we're going to be cool, we're going uh, to present these ideas in such a way that it's, it's fun and it's entertaining uh, and for the culture, right? That's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm just saying that's not necessarily leading you towards Christ, right? That's a, a spirit of the age, more so. And so, um, with our resources on Bible studies, when we actually get to the meat of what the ones we have here, we've devised those in such a format that we're, we're not saying these are the things you need to do to be a better Christian. We're trying to go through these are just fundamental things to get you started in Christ, right? Biblical manhood, biblical womanhood, uh, uh, whether the death penalty is biblical or not, or whatever stream of thought you want to go into in to various Bible studies is way down the road. These Bible studies that we use most often are just to get you started. So John... 8, 31 and 32. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And so uh, we apply that to all of scripture when Jesus says my word. Um, but even if you were to just look at the parables of Jesus, what are most of the parables about? Anybody? Being faithful in his kingdom. About the kingdom of God, right? Um. How many people are walking into, uh, without comparing it, if we're not helping you grow in the kingdom of God, then we're not helping you grow, right? Simple as that. Deuteronomy 8.3, and he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And so... Uh, one of our Bible studies, it's the second one I have listed, is the SSS 1A, which stands for Search the Scripture Series 1A, uh, which is all about the Bible and the importance of Bible study and why you should study the Bible and what the Bible says about the Bible. And so there's uh, six pages, right? There's uh, six pages of just, there's no notes, it's just Bible verses, um, about just what the Bible says with a couple headings that say, like, it's more valuable than 
uh, riches or gold. Uh, it, it feeds you, right? And so Jesus quotes this in Matthew 4.4 4 and Luke 4.4 4, uh, uh, to combat Satan in the desert uh, and in the wilderness. And so uh, what we're trying to do through scripture study is to help you grow, is to feed you. You're not going to grow up unless you're fed, right? You can't grow without proper nutrition. And so, um, but with that, all analogies break down somewhere, but First uh, Peter 2, uh, 1 and 2, talk about babies need milk, right? Well, we have a problem in our culture, and with even, um, now I'm not even talking about the greater evangelical culture, I'm talking about in our discipleship groups, in our homes, with our children, is we want to give babies meat, right? But a baby can't eat meat, it will choke, it will die, or it won't be able to process it, and it won't get any nutrition. It will be malnourished, right? We expect, uh, and we do the same thing with our children or with our wives or with our discipleship groups. And we need to start with milk, right? We need to start uh, with foundational things. And so let's skip that Acts verse. Let's go to Ezra 7.10. For Ezra has set his heart to study the law of God, to do it, and to teach his statutes and rules in Israel. So that's what we're all about, studying the law of the Lord, studying the Bible, doing it. Let's not skip that step. <laughs> and then teaching it. Uh, it really is that progression, right? And that is the progression that um, we want to see in everybody, right? We don't, uh, one of the reasons why um, this is maybe just a personal goal, and I think it's helped like at least one person a week, and that's all I care about, uh, is that it at least helped one person, is that one of the reasons why I'm doing this series on resources to help you grow, it's because what Josiah said um, a couple weeks ago is that like, and scripturally, everybody is expected to make disciples. Everybody is expected to be an intricate part of a body of Christ in a local community to do something, to become equipped, to to serve Christ's kingdom in their respective manner. And uh, essentially, if you were to look from a thousand-yard view, that's to read scripture, to become a mature Christian, and then teach other people. That's all you got to do. It's really, it's really simple. <laughs> it's not easy, but it's really simple. And so, um, I've made the case before that these are just tools this isn't like a step-by-step, -step. this is what you do to become a mature Christian. And then when you check it off, I'm done. And then I've got like, hopefully at least like 30 years to goof off and go jet skiing or something. Uh, because I reached my goal. No, uh, this is an all-encompassing life process that we're always maturing. We're always growing in, in sanctification. And then we should always be teaching others. Right? And so... This is why every church does a Bible study, uh, and I'll tell you why we do some of these. Uh, we'll have a lot of time for just talking about some of these Bible studies. Acts 8, 30 and 31. And so Philip was an evangelist. Uh, he's the only person in Scripture listed specifically as an evangelist, and he's leaving Samaria. He's on a road. I can't remember one. And he sees a, a eunuch from Ethiopia traveling, and the Holy Spirit prompts him to say, hey, go talk to that guy. So Philip walks up, and he's like, he's listening. And uh, I don't know if that was part of Philip being kind of scared to approach him, or, but he just listened for a little bit. And the eunuch is uh, reading from Isaiah 53. And then here's where we pick up. Uh, so Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you were reading? Has anybody ever had that problem? You sit down, you read scripture. And you're like, I don't get it. Uh, and, then, and he said, how can I, unless someone guides me? Right? Uh, I could tell you for a fact, uh, one of the reasons why we're called to continue reading scripture and studying is because we're just not that smart. <laughs> the Lord, the clarity of scripture, the Lord will always show you something and it'll usually be something that you didn't see before, right? You guys have had that in, in personal scripture where you're like, oh, I've read this a hundred times. 
I'm reading it for the hundred first time, and wow, there's something new. Uh, and so he invited Philip to come up and to sit with him, right? But the eunuch like rightly identifies, how am I supposed to like understand this unless someone guides me, unless someone instructs me? And in that specific sense, the eunuch was like, well, the prophet, is he talking about like himself or is he talking about somebody else? Because that'd be really important. Because if the prophet was just talking about himself, then that happened in the past and that's done and over. And that doesn't have a lot of weight and bearing on my life today. But if he's talking about somebody else, maybe it could. I don't know. Uh, he had to think through these things, right? He was probably starting to meditate on it. And so um, these Bible studies that we do, uh, one of them is in our visitor's packet. This is the one I could grab really quickly. It is the very first one on there, uh, the RRBC Rediscovering and Restoring Biblical Christianity series. And so that's like a thousand Bible studies or something. Um, it's closer to like 150. But, and so here in our Bible studies, um, this is just a sheet of scriptures, right? And then at the end, it has 15, well, sometimes 14, uh, should update that one, um, emphasis that we're focusing on to restore a biblical Christianity. And so I don't start with the, the Bible and the points of the Bible on here. And if you were to uh, look at this list, I would just say in a very practical sense, uh, if you want to grow, you can just go straight through the line. I put these in a very specific order. Um, that doesn't mean it applies to everybody, but uh, it would be a general order. And so, but with these, you've got a couple options. There's usually a podcast on them. You can find the podcast on the website. Uh, but I think that's, so the first option is grab the Bible study, read the scriptures, and go through it. There's some notes on them, and that'll help you. Uh, what'll help you even more is finding the podcast. Get a hold of me. I can send you a link. Josiah can send you a link. Uh, and that will help you a little bit more because then there's somebody going through it uh, in about 45 minutes to explain it. What will help you even more is to get with someone that disciples you or to get with a more mature Christian uh, to say, hey, can we go through this? Because um, what you notice when you do any sort of study, whether it's biblical studies or whether it's during school or anything, um, if you're just reading a textbook, you might get it to one level. But if you're sitting with a professor uh, or uh, the nerd in class who knows all the answers, uh, <laughs> they can give you a little bit more information, right? They'll help you understand it a little bit more. And then maybe that nerd knows it more than the professor uh, or not. And then maybe the professor is the next level. Uh, but if you're sitting down with a the professor, they would definitely give you all the answers you need to know for the test. Uh, or what you need to study, what would be most important, right? And so that would be the best way to go through it. If you grab the Bible study, read through it, uh, listen to the podcast would be the next, and then uh, just find somebody, get a, every, there's like uh, 10 discipleship group leaders, um, get a hold of one of them. If you're not in one, find one, um, and then ask them to go through it. And so because... You could read it and not necessarily get out of it what is intended. Does that make sense? And so, especially when we look at those 15 emphasis. And so on there, on the first Bible study, Rediscovering and Restoring Biblical Christianity, uh, the very first one is, well, let's look at it. It doesn't mean to love God, right? Well, that's a pretty good way to start. It doesn't say anything about like biblical manhood or womanhood or, uh, or whether I should uh, work on Sunday or not. Those are surely addressed in those topics, but that doesn't, that comes second. That comes third, fourth, fifth down the line, right? And so on that topic of what does it mean to love God, it's what does it mean to study his scripture, and so if you were to just go through um, that first outline of the RRBC series and think about those scripture verses and think about those 15 emphases and then think about 
does this make sense? And is this a constant idea in my life? Is this what my life is about? Right? Does it conform to the scriptures? And am I therefore then uh, not just studying it, but am I doing it? Right? Study, do, teach. Uh, that old, old dictum that those who can't do teach is a humanistic worldly thing. So, so truthism, it is true uh, <laughs> in much of the world. But biblically, we're supposed to study, do, and then teach. Right? We, don't, uh, we wouldn't put up with people who, uh, who lives aren't characterized by what they're teaching. That's called hypocrisy. Welcome to the West. Uh, and so the second one on there, which I'm pretty sure, if you've been here more than a week, I hope you've gotten it, I hope you've read through it, is the Search the Scripture series, 1A, The Bible on the Importance of Bible Study. Uh, I just went through all that over the course of like four weeks, four or five weeks, uh, with the men and women in India on our uh, video call, and I got more out of it than they did, probably. <laughs> I think I did. Uh, not, not saying anything about their level, I'm just saying... I went through it again and had to teach it and had to go through it and had to read it. And I felt more conviction and got more insight by going through it again. Uh, so th this isn't a one and done. This isn't a take a step. This is, are we doing and conforming our whole life to this, right? And then so um, the next one that we would look at is the five steps to entering Christ's kingdom. Um, we call that, I don't know, we might have that in here in the visitor's packet just to give you an idea. We have an article called Meat and Potatoes Christianity, uh, which you heard me talk about with the uh, foundational articles. Um, and on the back, we have what's called the 555 principle. And one of those, the first one is the five steps to entering Christ's kingdom. And so, uh, so if you were um, in previous years on the leadership, we never had an official anything, uh, of Wright State's Rock Campus Fellowship, uh, you would have had to take a test and you would have had to know what are the five vital, five steps to entering Christ's kingdom with scripture verses. Let's see how well they remember because I know a lot of you are in here. What's the first step to entering Christ's kingdom? Studying biblical manhood and womanhood. No. Uh, okay, I'm going to drop that topic. No. It's receiving Jesus, right? You can't enter Christ's kingdom without receiving Jesus. So what does that mean? Well, I prayed the prayer in my heart and I answered an altar call and I come to church. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> right? Is that biblical? No. Probably not. Uh, maybe something went on. Um, but what does it really mean to receive Jesus, to enter into his kingdom, to make him Lord? Uh, right? That's a huge study. Everybody should go through that. Uh, now, there's steps one through five, but number one has to come first, and then two, three, four, and five are in no particular order biblically. But what do we call step two? Water baptism, Water baptism right? Uh, if you were to read further in, in Acts chapter eight, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch is starting to study scripture with Philip, and then he says, well, there's some water, let's get baptized. He at least got that far enough in the 555 outline. Uh, before Philip takes them, right? Water baptism, um, right? There's so many different views on baptism nowadays. Uh, we don't, as a church, or biblically, hold to any particular view. There are some things uh, that Scripture points out that are really important to study, but what is baptism? Why do we get baptized? What mode of baptism is important? Is that a thing? Uh, is that even a right question, um, right? All of those things are, uh, are out there in controversy world, but, but to really study scripture and to, to find out what the Lord sa says about baptism uh, is what we're going after, right? Step three, baptizing the Holy Spirit, right? There's another, go down one line, baptism in the Holy Spirit studies, right? Uh, New Testament Christians were baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, and that was a regular thing, right? And so you can look, the reason why we do this Bible study is, and in, in usually early on, um, is to say, like, 
are you progressing in Christ's kingdom? Uh, it's not a check the box, right? Did I complete this step to be a mature Christian? It's, is this what the Lord's calling me into, into his kingdom? And I, am I progressing and maturing in his kingdom, right? So getting baptized in the spirit. Step four. Healings and deliverances. Yeah, inner healing and deliverance, right? Uh, getting demons cast out. Are there any demonic influences in your life? Are there any uh, emotional or spiritual wounds that you've experienced that need to be healed from in order for you to progress into Christ's kingdom? And what's number five? Entering a New Testament, Entering a New Testament uh, community lifestyle, right? Um, and so very simply, without getting into the five vital signs of life, which are, this is also kind of included, but when you look at what Colossians says about uh, maturity, and especially what Ephesians 4 says about maturity, is you cannot be um, idle, not involved in a body, in a community of believers doing work for the Lord, and uh, not be progressing in maturity, right? You have to do that in order to be reaching maturity, right? And if the church isn't training you and you're not becoming equipped and that's not your goal, you're never going to be mature in Christ. You just simply won't. Um, because that is a sign of maturity, is that you are part of a community, of a body of Christ. You're working in unity with one another to advance Christ's kingdom, right? There's always growth. It's all about the kingdom, um, and somewhere we're going to get into biblical manhood and womanhood in these studies. I just know it. we're going to learn how to be good women or something. Uh, that comes way down the line, right? It's all about advancing Christ's kingdom. Uh, so you guys just gave me the answers uh, for the five steps to entering Christ's kingdom. That's kind of an important study for self-examination of not just like... so. Receiving Jesus, I think, is a constant, ongoing, daily thing. Uh, water baptism isn't. You're only doing that once. But, but communion uh, is another sacrament. But you should be constantly reminded of your baptism in Christ. Of, it's, it's a spiritual warfare thing of like, do you, have you studied and know enough about baptism? And do you have the right paradigms of Scripture to say, oh, when I'm having spiritual warfare and I'm having tons of like self-denigrating thought, do I remember that, oh, I was buried in Christ, I was buried in the waters, and I was raised in the newness of life. I don't have to think this way. I don't have to act this way. Uh, do you use it? Or is, was, was it just an empty symbol, and, or did you not get baptized, and that's for later on in life, or something, right? It's like, did you, did you know the biblical precepts of the importance? And so those things help you. Those studies help you. The five vital signs of life. Um, the series verse for that one we use is 2 Corinthians 13, 5, 10. Um, that says, I won't, I won't botch it out of my poor memory. And I might have got the reference wrong. Hey, no, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Okay, well, what's the exam? Where's your 100-question survey to see if I get the right answers? Test yourself. Okay, I'm ready. Give me the test. Or do you not know, uh, or do you not realize this about yourself, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail to meet the test? Oh, no. The test is, is has Christ been formed in you? And there are certain things that Scripture points out that are signs of life in the Christian? Uh, and are those things active and growing in you? Uh, many times, even our Lord uses the, the horticulture analogies of, of fruit and trees growing. Is it, is it producing more fruit? Is it continually growing? Is it expanding? Because um, I can tell you all about my fruit trees at home and uh, the frustrations of how hard it is to get fruit with uh, East Staten squirrels, and are those things getting are those things that are getting in the way of your growth and fruitfulness uh, uh, flourishing, or is fruit flourishing, right? And so uh, there's a study on the five vital signs of life. 
Um, I'm not going to mention them now because if you don't know them, then you should study them. You should get the Bible study. Uh, we talked about the baptism in the Spirit. Uh, the eight essential elements of the biblical Christian gospel series. That's another one. You know, a thousand Bible studies. Uh, there's plenty to go through. Um, but, and so we categorically list eight things that are essential to the Christian gospel. And so when we're going out and evangelizing, and we're going out and sharing the gospel, um, are we preaching something, or are we, when we're discipling people, are we actually giving them a full biblical gospel, or our best attempt, or are we watering it down? Are we taking the easy path? Right? Or are we giving them the easy path? Give them the simple path, but not the easy path. Make it clear. And it should be clear to you. Um, and so, how does the, real quick, just how does the kingdom advance from people to people? Talk. Right? It's words. How does the gospel advance in your life? I talk. It's words. It's by words. It's by God's words. It's by communication. It's always about communication. It's always relational. And so if you want to grow in the kingdom, you have to understand how God is communicating to you. And if you want other people to grow, and if you want to help other people to grow, you have to be able to communicate it clearly to them. And so besides just you becoming a mature Christian and using these Bible studies, the kind of secondary goal is, um, has ever, anybody ever, uh, everyone's had this, but maybe like in a school project or um, when your parents misunderstood and caught you doing something that wasn't actually bad, but you're trying to explain it and you're having trouble explaining it, <laughs> right? And you're like, no, I wasn't really doing that, but you don't understand. You got to... It's... Uh, or if you were like in the middle of a school project or something or an oral uh, presentation and you know it like deeply in your mind and you, you think you do, but then when you're trying to tell other people, you're like, uh, uh, and you're like tripping over your words and you're like, well, I'm not really communicating clearly, right? We're trying to get to the level where uh, not just you know it internally and you're internalizing it, but you can tell your spouse or your children, right? Uh, maybe this isn't, this is maybe farther along in the biblical manhood, womanhood series, but does everybody know that like, you don't talk to your wife the same way you talk to your children? Anybody not know that? Does anybody want to? Uh, some people learn the hard way. Uh, hopefully this isn't too late for you. Um, but you have to communicate, and it's a different way you communicate to your wife a certain thing. Like, hey, even if I was communicating to my wife, don't touch the stove, it's hot. I might communicate that differently to my, to my youngest daughter, Lily, uh, who's seven. Um, I would take different modes and ways to communicate. There'd be different tones, there'd be different words used, right? And um, like in my experience in doing the, and when you talk to people from a different culture, it gets even harder, right? Doing the Bible study in India, they don't have the same idioms that we have. Uh, <laughs> There's many times where I can just tell, like, oh, yeah, I said something that only makes sense to a Western American, uh, right? I don't want them to hear the Western American gospel and to understand these Western idioms. I want them to understand the biblical gospel, right? And so you have to learn how to communicate these truths of scriptures to a million different people. That's how much you have to study. That's how much you have to know it. Right. Um, going back to the quote I had said about um, just everything being kind of disassembled and compromised by evangelicals in the last couple of generations is that we can quote and say, well, Jesus died for my sins. And uh, even just that is just like loaded with presuppositions. And what the heck does that mean? Right. Like, if you got to be able to explain that. you got to know that internally. Um, so the, uh, we got two more just to, I want to mention, is the Grace Upon Grace series. Um, again, when I teach that to other people or when I take people through the outlines, 
I don't know if I'm getting more than them, but every time reading the scriptures on God's grace and going deeper in grace is beneficial. Um, that's a foundational one. And then lastly, employing God's gift series is how do you get utilized if uh, the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable? That doesn't mean that you're not going to have an opportunity to not use them. They're just not going to be taken away. But are you going to utilize God's gifts that he's given you to become part of a community of believers who is advancing the kingdom of Christ? Um, and we need everybody on board. The goal is to get everybody mature so that everybody's on board, so that everybody's gifts and everybody's calling is utilized. Uh, Lily Gray isn't in the audience today, but everybody knows that she broke her leg, right? Or fractured it or something. Uh, and she's walking around with that thick boot. <laughs> it looks all funny. Uh, uh, her one leg isn't getting utilized as much, right? And... Um, it's very hard to walk around without a leg, with only one leg. You were meant for two, right? Write that down in case you forget. Uh, but we're, the church is the body of Christ. If we're missing legs or we're missing even like a pinky finger, we're walking around like this and we're not getting utilized. We can't hold things as well, uh, allegorically speaking, as a church. And so knowing what uh, those those... Uh, those gifts that God has put in you uh, and that he destined for eternity to be part of this community is important to know. Are you being utilized? Are you growing in that? Are you teaching other people and using your gifts to, to, to lead and teach other people in their separate gifts, right? That's the goal because when we, when we are the body and we're unified and we're mature and we're progressing in maturity, uh, we start doing not the like, uh, childish things as a community, as in like walking and stumbling and falling, and we progress to uh, maybe adolescence where we're awkward teenage boys that knock things over and don't know how to control their limbs, but the goal is to be a mature man who understands how to use his body and, and build things, right? And so use these Bible studies. Uh, again, the, the best way to do it is to, you can email me, you can talk to me, I'll print these out, I can get a digital format. You can read through it, you can find a podcast, and most importantly, you can talk to uh, a discipleship group leader um, and go through them. Got it? Great. Uh, let's pray. Lord, we pray that you would uh, really mature us, Lord, we'd really grasp a hold of your word and the power of your spirit, Lord, to grow closer to you through Christ, to become a body of Christ who is mature, advancing your kingdom. Cause uh, just the ideas of the gospel, the truths that you have spoken um, to be internalized in us and help us communicate that to one another. Help us do that on a daily basis in our, in our households, in our families, uh, and with those who we see. Lord, give us your grace. Give us your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.